This isn't just a generator, it's a solar generator. One of the coolest things about a solar generator is charging them with solar power. Why pay your electric company to charge off grid power when the sun is just giving away energy for free? So let's get you charging your Opus solar generator with free power from the sun. So how do you know which solar panel to use? Every solar generator has a range of input it can use. Too low and the unit will not charge. Too high and you can fry the electronics inside. So you want to use a panel or a set of panels that fits into that range. The most important number in your panel specs for safety is the open circuit voltage. This is the maximum voltage the panel can produce. You want to make sure that the voltage is above the minimum level and below the maximum input level for your panel. The Exodus 600 can charge with a solar input between 15 and 35 volts, while the Exodus 2400 can take between 12 and 78 volts of solar input. The Opus 240 watt panel has an open circuit voltage of 24.6 volts and has a short circuit current of 12.3 amps. The Opus 100 watt panel has an open circuit voltage of 24.4 volts and has a short circuit current of only 5.27 amps. The other two specs, amps and wattage, are important to maximize efficiency. Generally, voltage times amps equals wattage. So if you take the VMP or voltage at maximum power of the 240 watt panel and multiply it times the IMP or current at max power, you get 20.5 times 11.7, which equals 239.85 watts. Now it is possible to over panel, and that means putting a panel or set of panels with more wattage or amps than recommended, but you should never use a panel or panels with more voltage than the input range of your solar generator. The 600 maxes out at 240 watts of input, while the 2400 maxes out at 800 watts of input. Though it is not efficient, you could have panels charging either of those two power stations that produce more than their maximum rated input wattage if they're within the voltage range. The solar generator will just not charge at that higher wattage, so any extra watts of input are just wasted. How do you connect the solar panels to your solar generator? While there are some exceptions, many of the solar panels have MC4 connections that look something like this. Now, most solar panels have a different kind of solar input, meaning that you're going to need an adapter cable to get the power into the battery. Some panels might have an SAE plug that looks like this. Some have various DC kind of barrel plugs, just like the DC7909 that's here. Some solar generators may have other kinds of inputs, like you might see an XT60 plug, looks like this. Some even have proprietary plugs, and of course, obviously, those would be provided with the solar generator that you buy. Opus power stations generally have one of two solar inputs. They either have the DC7909 that I was talking about before, or they'll have an Anderson input plug. Now the Opus solar panels, they have both an MC4 out and a DC7909. And any Opus power station or battery that doesn't have the DC7909 input comes with an adapter just like this one that will allow you to adapt it to charge it from the MC4 plugs. Now, how do you connect your panels in the most efficient way? There are two ways to connect solar panels, and which you use depends on several factors. You can connect your panels in series, or you can connect them in parallel. Think of series as completing a series of connections in order to make a closed circle, whereas parallel will make a Y, where two solar inputs will run parallel to each other. For series, you simply need to connect one side of the panel to the input of the solar generator, then connect the other to the output of the other panel, and then connect the other output of the panel to the open input of the solar generator, closing up that series of connections. You can connect a string of panels all together, adding as many as your generator can handle. For parallel, you'll need to bring all of the positive outputs of the panel together into the positive input of the generator, and then all the negative outputs together into the negative input. Series and parallel wiring each behave differently, and you need to consider how they work with your panels and solar generators. Wiring panels in series will increase the voltage. Wiring panels in parallel will increase the amps. If I take two 240 watt panels and wire them in series, then I will be sending up to 480 watts at a maximum of 49.2 volts. So if I had an Exodus 1500, which can take 480 watts of solar input, you would not want to wire two 240 watt panels in series because the input voltage would exceed the maximum input of the 1500, which is 30 volts. 
However, if I were to wire those same 240 watt panels in parallel, the voltage stays the same and the amps double to 24.6 amps. Now the Exodus 1500 can take 480 watts up to 25 amps of power. You can safely and efficiently use two 240 watt panels in parallel with the 1500. But the Exodus 2400 can take up to 70 volts of solar input. So to get the most efficient input from two 240 watt panels, you'd want to wire them in series since the 2400 has an input max of 13 amps. Wiring the panels in parallel would exceed the amps and waste that power like we talked about before. You could actually use three 240 watt panels wired in series for a voltage of 73.8, which is less than the maximum input of 78 volts. So that would be a potential of 720 watts of solar input from those panels. Now, why did I say potential of input? A solar panel rating is based on the most efficient use of the panel. If you had the sun in the best position, the sky is clear, the panel is at exactly the right angle going into the solar generator with the right range of voltage, you could hit a maximum solar rating of the panel, probably. On most days, something's gonna be off. The angle of the panel maybe isn't exactly right, or the sun's further away depending on the time of year. Maybe there's haze or pollution in the air. Most of the time, you're gonna see less than the rated wattage of the panel. The Opus 100 watt panel is smaller and more portable than the 240 watt panel. It's similar in voltage to the output of the 240 watts, but has lower amp output. So you could use two 100 watt panels in parallel to charge the Exodus 600, but not in series because that would exceed the voltage input. So let's do some testing with my panels. So in order to show you how to charge your solar generators from Opus, I put out two of the 240 watt solar panels and we're gonna wire them either in series or in parallel as needed, or I'll disconnect if we have a solar generator that can't take more than 240 watts or can't take the voltage. So this is the Opus Exodus 600. And even though it only has a 256 watt hour battery, it can take up to 240 watts of solar power. All right, now remember, the 240 watt panel actually has a 7909. Um, I've extended the MC4s just to get it out of the complete sun, and I've converted it here. So you just put it in the back, just like that. We'll give it a second to start building up charge and see what she does. All right, looks like we're getting up to around 150 watts. Uh, got a few clouds in the area, but you know, with this 240 watt panel, if we were to get close to 200 watts, I mean, we would be charging this in just over an hour from zero. There's 160. So, you know, depending on your weather and, you know, all the other factors that go into the efficiency of your 240 watt panel, I mean, you can charge the Exodus 600 or its cousin, the Exodus 600 Plus, pretty fast. The Exodus 1200. Let's get it plugged in. So the 1200 can take 240 watts of solar. So I have disconnected one of the panels and I've extended the MC4s and then I'm converting it into the DC 7909. So since the 1200 can only take 240 watts of input, uh, one panel of course is the max that you can do on that. So that one panel, it's bounced between 160 and 170 watts could probably get a little more if I adjusted it, but you can see that simply taking the output of the panel, which is either the 7909 or extending the MC4s and converting it to the 7909 into the Exodus 1200, and one of those 240 watt panels will charge it pretty well. This is the Exodus 1500, and unique to the Exodus line, while it can take 480 watts of solar, it can only take in 30 volts, which means that if I were to wire this with two 240 watt panels in series, I would be exceeding the maximum voltage input. Therefore, I need to wire this to get 480 watts. I need to wire it in parallel. Let's talk about how to do that. To wire the Exodus 1500 in parallel, you need a couple of different things. You can have a cable like this. This cable actually comes with the Exodus 1500. And you can see it has two positive and two negative MC4 inputs that convert into the Anderson. And so you would plug in your two 240 watt panels here, just as you would, and it would run into your 
input on the 1500. You can do this if you have the 1500 close enough to the panels. Now, where I have ours, I need the extension cable. So in order to make an extension cable work, you need a set of these, kind of like a Y adapters that go from two MC4s back out and two MC4s back out. And then we'll see if we can get that wired in. All right, you can see I have the two outputs of the two 240 watt panels here. Here's where my extension cable needs to go. I need to basically sum up these cables so that they are split in a Y here. So again, with the Y, connect those. So negative to negative, going into the negative. Positive and positive going into the positive. So if you look at that, these are wide off, not a circle. These are negatives and these are positives, each going into the respective negative and positive input. Now that we have that wired up, this is a parallel signal, which will not exceed the 30 volt input. Again, looks like we're topping around 330 watts, 326 watts, 28. And that's in parallel configuration, so under 30 volts, but still getting, you know, the same amount of wattage we would if we were able to go higher in that voltage. So that's parallel. And the Exodus 1500 is the only Exodus unit that you need to wire in parallel. A series connection goes from the negative to the positive. So this is from one panel, this is the other panel, negative to positive, to a negative, positive, and so it makes a circle, not a Y, so a circle. This is the Opus Exodus 2400 with 2230 watt hours of battery. It can take up to 800 watts of solar. I have switched this back from where we were going parallel into the 1500. I switched it back to series, and we're gonna plug it back in and see how she does. Hopefully we'll get, you know, another 350, 330 watts of power into the 2400. So we're already climbing up to the 330, almost 340 watt input. Not too bad, considering the amount of clouds that we have. So now I have my two panels still wired in series. So that's a circle, that's positive to negative to positive to negative. I have them running into a mega one and the B2 battery. You can see the two panels in series. Let's see if we can pick that up. It's pulling in about 330, 334 watts right now with the sun the way it is. What happens if I add a 100 watt panel and plug it in to the side of the B2 battery? Let's check it out. With the current level of sun on the 100 watt panel, I'm getting about 72, 73 watts. And we're up to about 360 watts on the series panels out in the yard. So at around 435 watts of input, it would take well over six hours, maybe seven hours to charge the Mega One and the B2 battery, which is three kilowatts of power from zero. But of course we're only about halfway. So it would take this probably a little under four hours to charge up to 100%. So that's how you can charge your Opus solar generator with free power from the sun. I'm Scott and I'm a fan of the Opus solar generators and I'm also a fan of getting free power from the sun. If you've enjoyed this video and wanna see more like it, make sure you subscribe. Go ahead and leave a comment telling us how you've charged your own Opus power stations. And I'll see you on the next one.